there may call rolling blackouts for the state, which could happen at any time. Emergency. Well, the power right. crisis isn't getting any better now. The state's investment. Homes and businesses this is confirms the that the dump. independent system's operator we hasn't... We are currently been... in a stage three alert. California has a serious problem, and you have been selected to be part of the solution. We've all seen the consequences of not having enough power plants in the state of California. Running short of energy can be devastating. The good news is there's help on the way, and you have been selected to be part of a very important project that will play a key role in the solution of the state's crisis. The Blythe Energy Project is a 520 megawatt power plant that will increase the generation of energy in the state of California and improve the reliability of California's power grid. The plant will be located on a 76-acre site within the city of Blythe in Riverside County. The Blythe area was selected due to its natural gas supply, transmission lines, highway access, and ample water supply. Power generated by the facility will be interconnected with transmission and substation facilities. The Blythe substation in turn will connect with lines to Western Area Power, Imperial Irrigation District, and Southern California Edison, which supply energy to homes and businesses in much of Southern California. The Blythe Energy Project will provide competitively priced power to the wholesale market, improve electric system capability and reliability in California, as well as provide economic growth for the community. The Blythe Energy Project is very, very important, not just to the county of Riverside, the Palo Verde Valley, but to the entire state of California. As we all know, we have an energy crisis. We need more power sources, and this project, which has full support of the county and the city of Blythe is uh, going to be an important link in our efforts to bring uh, power to Californians. One of the exciting things that I look forward to with a project such as the size of this is that we know that it won't be just a power plant because there's going to be many other businesses and services that are going to need, be needed to service a project as large as this power plant. And that's one of the things that is exciting. So not only are we going to see the benefit from the increase of employment in the city of Blythe from that power plant, but from those additional businesses that are going to relocate here at Blythe, those new businesses that are going to be started up to service that power plant. That's exciting. That's real economic growth, and that's real economic opportunity. Tax revenues, stable electric rates, a continuous source of power, these are things that industry coming into the valley look for, which we cannot guarantee now. Our future is with the Blythe Energy Project. Along with being selected to work on this important project go special responsibilities. Blythe Energy Project has agreed with the California Energy Commission to construct the project within certain environmental guidelines. Our job is to provide energy in an environmentally sound manner. During construction, your responsibilities will include the protection of biological resources, cultural resources, and paleontological resources. You will be working with a team of environmental specialists. There will always be a member of the Site Safety and Environmental Protection Team on site. On the front line will be a Site Safety and Environmental Officer. They will provide you with ongoing training on biological, cultural, and paleontological resources. You will also be working with designated resource experts, including a designated biologist, a cultural resource specialist or archaeologist, a paleontological resource specialist or paleontologist. You will receive regular updates regarding whom to contact if you encounter these resources. Also, you will receive a card to keep in your wallet with appropriate contacts and phone numbers. The on-site safety and environmental officer and others on the site management team will have direct access to the designated biologist, archaeologist, and paleontologist. This team will be working to keep the project in compliance with state and federal laws designed to protect these resources during construction. The next three sections of this video will familiarize you with these resources and your responsibilities in these areas. In contrast to its rugged appearance, the Mojave Desert is a fragile place. It has creatures that have inhabited the area long before man, as well as rare plant life and cultural resources. 
It's our job to ensure their protection during our time in their environment. The Mojave Desert is home to the desert tortoise and the burrowing owl. The desert tortoise is protected by the Federal Endangered Species Act and the burrowing owl is protected by the California Department of Fish and Game. Desert tortoises are ancient desert dwellers dating from the last ice age. In captivity, they have been known to live for more than 80 years. So many tortoises that you might see are older than you are. Tortoises are entirely herbivorous, living on grasses and wildflowers. Tortoises hatch from eggs late in late spring and early summer. At hatching, they are no larger than a silver dollar, although they may grow to more than 16 inches in length. Hatchling tortoises have soft shells until they're approximately five years old, making them highly vulnerable to predation by many predators, including ravens, foxes, coyotes, and snakes. Tortoises have adapted to harsh desert living by staying in burrows when forage dries and temperatures soar, the ability to store water to withstand dry summers and drought, providing a large, high caloric yolk to feed hatchlings for the first six to eight months of their lives in the event of lack of forage. Despite this, tortoises have become endangered due to many factors including loss of habitat from expanding urbanization, major habitat changes from long-term grazing activities, road kills and habitat fragmentation from high traffic loads on expanding state and interstate highways, unnatural levels of predation, disease and severe drought. During dry periods, such as Blythe's hot summers where temperatures reach 120 degrees and there is no green vegetation to eat, desert tortoises have the ability to survive for months on the vital fluids they store in their bodies. Startling a tortoise, approaching it too quickly, or improper handling may result in dispelling these vital fluids. Dispelling these fluids could be life-threatening for the tortoise. Here to tell us more regarding the sensitive resources you could encounter on the job site is the Blythe Energy Project's Senior Environmental Scientist and Biological Monitor, Peter Boucher. Here at the power plant site, we'll survey for tortoises before construction begins and before the fence goes up. The fence will have an underground component that should make it tortoise proof. During construction, we'll inspect the fence to see if tortoises are trying to burrow under it, and if they are, we'll make some changes to the fence design. If we find tortoises in the area, we'll have the option to remove them using U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service approved procedures. The plant will be constructed in low quality desert tortoise habitat. However, to compensate for this permanent loss of habitat, the Blythe Energy Project will be working with the Desert Tortoise Preserve Committee to establish a preserve of over 77 acres of high quality desert tortoise habitat in the Chukwala Mountains, about 50 miles west of Blythe. If you encounter a desert tortoise, stop work immediately. Do not touch the animal. Immediately alert the site safety and environmental officer, your supervisor, or a biological monitor, as described to you during your ongoing training. They will determine the next course of action. The burrowing owl is a small ground-dwelling owl with long legs. They are often seen bobbing up and down. This owl does not have the ear tufts seen on many other species of owls. As their name suggests, burrowing owls nest in burrows in the ground, often in old ground squirrel or desert tortoise burrows. Burrowing owls tend to be opportunistic feeders. Beetles and grasshoppers comprise a large portion of their diet. Small mammals, especially mice, rats, gophers, are also important food items. After catching its prey, it returns to a perch on a fence post or its burrow. Owls can be easily disturbed and, if so, may abandon their nests and foraging areas. The burrowing owl population has been declining primarily due to habitat loss as a result of urban development. Burrowing owl habitat exists on the project site, levees along the pipeline route and adjacent areas. You'll be working closely with biological monitors when installing the natural gas pipeline in an area like this. We'll help to avoid any areas where these wildlife species are present, or we may even remove them to a safe area so that construction can continue. If you see a burrowing owl, stop work immediately. Do not disturb the animal and immediately alert the appropriate member of the site environmental monitoring team. They will determine the next course of action. 